Now, sometimes we do have situations where we don't really want to show a complete SIF UI view or take the user to a SIF UI view, but we have a SIF UI view and we just want to embed it into our existing UI kit view. So let's take a look at that example. I'm going to go ahead and create a brand new SIF UI view and I will call it rating view. Okay. Now I'm just going to go ahead and copy the rating view from somewhere. That's not a big deal. We just want to show you the rating view. And then I'm going to go ahead and try to style it a little bit. Okay. Okay. So this is our rating view. Let's go ahead and see how it actually looks like. We do have to pass in rating. So I can go ahead and pass a constant rating of, let's say, 4. And let's go ahead and see that how this rating view looks like. So this is what the rating view kind of looks like. Great. So it works. I can see the view. But then the question is, well, how would I display this view in our application? Meaning, if I'm using a view controller, how can I load this particular view? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create the hosting controller. And that can be done by using UI hosting controller, passing in the root view. In this case, we can pass in the rating view. For the rating view, we can pass in some constant value. Now, you might be wondering, okay, how do I get the rating if I get selected? Or if you select the rating, we'll get back to that a little bit later. Right now, we just want to display the rating view in our existing view controller. Now, obviously, this value can be coming from anywhere, from a API, from a database. I'm just passing three over here. Next, I'm going to go ahead and get the rating view out of it. So this hosting view controller or the hosting controller does have a view property and that is going to give you the view that is being hosted, which in our case will be the rating view. Next, we can go ahead and add the child as a hosting controller. And the reason that we're adding a child to self, which is a view controller itself, is so that the hosting controller can understand the life cycle of the rating view and can control the life cycle of that view. So this basically means that self, which is view controller, has another child view controller in there, which is the hosting controller. And finally, we can go ahead and take the view and add sub view, which is a ratings view. Now, if we run this application right now, we may be able to see part of the rating view or not at all. You can see, there we go. We can see part of the rating view. So it is being displayed. So that is correct, it is being displayed. But since we didn't really add any constraints, that's why it is displayed at the wrong position. So now I can go ahead and try to make sure that I can center it by adding some constraints to it. I'm gonna add the constraints for the center X and the center Y so that the rating view is centered on the screen. But still you can see rating view has some issues, okay? For this, I'm going to go ahead and also set the rating view dot translate mask property rating view dot translate mask is to false. And there we go. Now we have our rating view being displayed in a view controller in a UI kit application. And the great part is that this is just a view, like the rating view is just a view. So this means that in your view controller, if you want, you can have other views around it. Like maybe you can have a button view, maybe you have a label view, maybe you have a you know, picker view. And in the middle, you can have a view that you created in SIF UI. So you can import that, you can load that and display it. So this is how easy it is that you can use UI hosting controller to get the controller working and then you get the view out of it 
and then you simply add it as a subview. Now, one of the things you will notice is if you click on any of these things, it doesn't really work. So even though you do have a rating view, it doesn't really work as expected, okay? Now, how do we get it to work? How do we get the value from the rating view? Let's go ahead and check it out in the next lecture. In the last lecture, you learned that how you can display or embed a SIF UI view, which is the rating view, in your application. So if I run my UI kit application, you can definitely see the rating view being displayed. But how do we interact with it? I mean, I can't click on it, I can't interact it. If I click on or tap on four or five stars, I'm interested in getting that particular value and displaying it on the screen in my UI kit application. So how can I do that? Well, this is how the rating view looks like. It takes a binding of the rating. Now you might say that, well, instead of taking the binding, how about we simply change it and return a closure or use a closure to get the value back to the view controller. But we can't do that because the rating view might be used in other parts of our application. So they're already using it, so we can't really change it. So if we can't change it, how can we get the value? If we go to the view controller, and instead of passing the constant, if we create a state, that might be your first choice, but the state is not really going to work. The state is only available and it's only going to work inside a SIF UI view. And we're not inside a SIF UI view, we're inside a view controller. So we can't really use that approach. The other approach we can do is we can use a container view. So let's go back to the rating view. Now we can't really change anything on this particular view. We cannot touch this view. That's the constraint that I'm putting. We cannot touch this control. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and create a class called rating. This will be an observable object and it will have a single property value and that property can be nullable and initially we'll assign it a value of three. Now we can't really change the rating view, but what we can do is create a rating view container, which is also a view. So the whole point of rating view container is to act like a hosting view so that it can host the rating view. And instead of passing a constant over here, now we should be able to pass in rating.value, where rating is simply an observed object that we can create inside our container. Great. This means that in our actual application, meaning in our view controller, we can start using the rating view controller. Let's go back to the view controller. And instead of the rating view over here, we can use the rating view container and pass in the rating. But how do we get the rating? Well, that is something that we can create. Private var rating, which is simply a rating. So now I can pass in that rating right over there. Great. And make sure that we are forming it correctly. There we go. Now, what happens if I run the application? Can I at least see the stuff? Oh, wow. We can not only run the application, but we can get the rating, meaning we can change the rating. But how do I get these ratings? Like if I'm clicking on one star, I need to get that rating one. If I'm clicking on two star, I need to get that rating two. How do I do that part? Well, one of the ways of getting the rating is by using combine and subscribing to those events. So in my view controller, I'm gonna go ahead and import combine. 
Next, I'm going to go ahead and create a cancelable. That is going to preserve the publisher. So I'm going to go over here and create a cancelable. And whenever the rating changes, meaning whenever the dollar sign the publisher actually changes or gives you the value, we will get that particular value. And I will do weak self because we will be accessing self over here. We will go ahead and unwrap the value. And then we can assign it somewhere like some sort of a rating label, but we don't have a rating label. Well, not to worry. Those things can be created really easily. We create a rating label. Make sure that we are adding the rating label to our application. So let's go and inject the rating label. We will also go ahead and add the rating label to our view. So let's go ahead and add some constraints to it, like a center X anchor. This means that whenever the rating value changes, the sync operator gets called and we get the new value. Once we get the new value, all we need to do is to assign it to the rating label or some other control that wants to display the new rating. Let's go ahead and run the application and see. Hmm, well, it is being displayed, but it's right there on the top. So we may need to put it somewhere in the middle. So let's go ahead and put a Y anchor also. It may cover something else, but we'll see. There we go. So we get it to be displayed. Right? Now, where you put it is kind of up to you, right? I mean, we can go ahead and say rating label dot top anchor if you want the top anchor to be constraints equal to the view dot top anchor. All right. And sometimes you can even put a constraints on it, but with a value. So equal to the view dot top anchor. And then probably you can add like 20 or 60 to it to give it a little bit more padding. And there we go, looks pretty good. And now we are able to get the value from our Swift UI view. And we didn't really change our Swift UI view. It is still the rating view and we use a container view to wrap it around so that we can use the observe object. We added a sync to the observe object. So whenever the value changes, we get the value. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then check out my courses on Udemy. I have a lot of different courses on Udemy, including the building real time chat application using SwiftUI and Firebase, ChatGPT, augmented reality, MVVM design pattern, MV pattern, that's the one that I follow, uh, reminders application clone, and I also publish an application for Swift data that I continuously update. So definitely check out those courses. Thank you so much.